So let's talk about operators. Let's go back to simples now that you've gotten some understanding of data types. Operators allow you to take multiple variables and do things with them. The most common is math. So we'll take var a equals one, var b equals two, var c equals a plus b. Algebra basics right there, right? So console.log, what is the value of c? Should be three, right? Cool, value of three, fantastic. Coffee, really cold and disgusting coffee actually. So that's constant, that's variables. You'll notice this plus is what's known as an operator. Now there are more operators than the standard math things, right? Such as a, you know, plus, minus, whatever else. We'll show you those. C equals B minus A. Notice the result is one. C is also one. Now, what does that mean for others? Can you do numbers? Yes, watch this. C equals five plus three, eight. C is now eight. And if you want to see it again, console dot log C. Ta-da, cool. Basics numbers, they have multiplication, division, all the rules of like, was it please, excuse my dear Aunt Sally, I don't know, all the mnemonic devices. They have operator precedent. So division is done before multiplication, which is done before subtraction, which is done before addition, right? all that stuff. F equals one plus one divided by two divided by two or two minus, let's say five minus three. There we go. I don't even know what that equals. Console.log F one. Okay. So it does these two first, right? The parentheses first, then it does the division, right? So this is basic algebra stuff. If you haven't gotten algebra yet, don't worry about it. Program, a lot of stuff you're learning in programming will give you a massive head start in a lot of the algebra. If not, a lot of the stuff, honestly, the server side guys do a lot of that stuff. So in programming, you get to play more with GUIs and less with numbers. Sometimes you're just formatting numbers. So it's not your thing, cool. If it is your thing, there are still plenty of opportunities to do math and JavaScript. So I wanted to cover some more operators as well, just to show you there's a variety of others. So we've covered addition, we've covered subtraction. Let's cover multiplication, right? So we're gonna say A. Actually, we don't even need variables at this point. We can just play with some math. So we'll do one, or two times five, which should equal 10, right? Cool, 10, okay? So we can store that value in a variable. Bar the product is two times five, and then print out the product, 10, right? So you can store those values, you can play with those values, you can do normal math operations. If you don't have a calculator handy, you can use that as well. We can also do the standard division, 10 divided by two is five. So we got division, right? I showed you that with the parentheses, but you can do that there. You can also do modulus division. All that means is what is the remainder? I don't care about what the value was, what is the remainder? So for example, 10 modulo three. Well, if you divide 10 by three, you can have a remainder. If you do 10 divided by three, you can see the 3.3. .3. Also, by the way, if you would like to clear your command line, you can just type in clear, it gets too big, right? And it'll get rid of all the stuff you've had in here. So you can do one plus one. And like I want to get rid of it, just having clear, I'll get rid of the console. Okay, so that's the basic operators. Let's talk about some more operators. There's a lot of shorthand operators that JavaScript has. The two that we're really concerned about are the plus plus and minus minus. So for example, if I want to add a number to an existing variable, let's say we have age, which equals 34, okay? So age is 34. We want to increment, right? Increment that value. I had a birthday. So we'll say age equals age plus one. I'm now 35. Now that is the long form, as it's often called, for addition. We can do age plus plus, shorthand. Now, plus plus as an operator, get, the increment operator gets a lot of bad press because it does some strange things with numbers and strings and when you add them together, whatever. It's a wonderfully useful thing. If you know JavaScript, you know to look for it. A lot of people from C backgrounds and other languages have this. So there's nothing bad about using it. There's nothing wrong with short, readable code. This is a built-in language construct. You are encouraged to use it and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. If they do, you can just, you know, play the play the violin for them, you know, nice and slow. Hopefully they're in France, they're sitting at a table. 
pour some nice champagne. Got a great view of the Eiffel Tower. Did I tell you I miss Paris? Oh my gosh. So anyway, that's that's what you can do. They also have the decrement operator. So we have our age, right? It's 35. You can say age minus minus, and then print out age, and it'll be 34, right? So that's another way you can do it as well. Now, these same operators can be put in front to do the actual operation of adding it first, then returning the value, right? The key with the increment plus plus and the minus is they actually return a value, right? That's, that's the other thing that's kind of nice about them. So for example, you saw that when I did it up here, I returned 35. Well, it said, this is what it is before I actually decrement it. When I print it afterwards, 34, 34 right? Let's say I go back in time again, and I want to minus it first, give me that value, and then use the value. So we say age is going to return 33, and if I print out age, it'll be 33. Slight difference. Most people don't put it in front because it's confusing. So that's fine. You're welcome to do that if that's your thing. Most people don't. Okay. They have the exact same thing for multiplication and division. So for example, if I want to know how old I am, let's go back to 34 real quick. So where do we stand? Where do we stand? Stand right here. I'm not saying it. I'm coding. I'm sending it down. Where do we stand? If we multiply my age by two, it's age equals age times two. Now it's 68. However, there's another way to do it. So if age is 34, we can also say age multiply equals. So it's just something you have to memorize. Age multiplies equals two. It's the same thing as saying age equals age times two, right? And you can do the same thing with division. So just a shorthand way to get to the same result, but makes your code small, tighter, tighter, sometimes easier to read. <laughs> Up for debate. Okay, so that's the basic operators right there. Of course, they have the standard uh, other ways of doing that with addition as well, which is slight, which doesn't return a value. So, for example, when I do uh, this, or I do this, they don't return a value. You can also do the same thing with addition. So, for example, if I want to multiply, so my current age is 34, I have birthday, age, you can say plus equals one, right? It's the same thing, it returns the age. So it doesn't actually return a value and it doesn't have return it. It's just another way of doing this, except this returns a value, okay? So you can nest that in function. Doing one, 34, good to go. All right. So that is all the real basic operators that you need to know, okay? How does numbers deal with floats and decimals and exponents and everything else? So JavaScript has something called a number. There aren't multiple types of number. It's basically a double precision signed unsit bind signed in blah 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 all that means is you have a really long decimal that goes up into the billions or something right that's what javascript is there's other languages that allow you to have integers which are positive integers that have no decimal points no remainders nothing else they have uh ones that are only positive ones that are both positive and negative right so when you're doing financial applications or something really heavy with math they give you you know better constructs numbers that are easier to deal with right javascript has one and it has all kinds of quirks, but for the most part, your math will work. And you have things like rant, round down and round up to compensate if you're doing hardcore math. So for example, if I have my true age, which is 34 point, I think 24, I just made that up. Okay, and we print that uh, age out, that number, that float, float, decimal, same thing, right? It's 34.24, that's cool. But what if like I don't care about the remainder, dude? I just want, can you round it? Yes. There's a wonderful construct we'll get into later called math.round. So we'll say, what if I take my age and round it down? What does it equal? 34. Woohoo! It rounds down. Round is from five on down, right? Or I think four on down. I think five and up. Anyway, point is you have ways of dealing with numbers and making them easier to use. String the same way. String has all kinds of of uh, operators that you can use with it. And that's what's weird. Algebra doesn't deal with strings. Algebra deals with numbers. Programming, you can actually use operators on strings. So let's do that. My full name is Jesse plus Warden. That's right, you're adding strings. Now the way it usually works is that you take two strings and put them together, kind of like glue them together, right? So if we say, all right, console.log, my full name, Jesse Warden, right? 
Now notice there's no space. You have to build the space. So let's do it again. Do my full name and then we'll put a space right before the W. Now let's print it out. A lot more readable, guess you wouldn't, right? You can do all kinds of concatenation. It's called concatenation, depending on what part of country you're from. Concatenation, you're adding strings together, right? You can do multiple strings. You can do plus, 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 plus. You can add all kinds of numbers to strings. Let's, this is where JavaScript gets weird. And every language handles this differently sometimes. So console.log jesse plus eight. Yes, this is bizarre, but it happens in really strange code sometimes. Jesse eight, right? So it knows that if you have a string somewhere in this addition and you have a number, depending upon the order, remember order precedence, like which order your math happens first, it's gonna probably do all the math first, then add it to the string, right? It just depends on where it's located. So Jesse eight. Now Jesse eight is a string, it's not a number, right? Because you can't add Jesse plus eight. That doesn't make any sense. But programming assumes you're trying to add strings together because you're gonna show it to the user because we're doing client-side programming, remember? So that's how addition and operators work with strings.